Welcome back to the Roxy Leukemia channel. Today, we're playing Seesaw Garden. We are planting a garden. Not here at our house and not one that's in the ground. We don't get tons of sun here and don't have much space to plant a garden at this house. But it's something I've always wanted to do. I grew up on a farm and we always had a huge garden every year planting all kinds of things, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, carrots, cucumbers, tomatoes, green beans, peppers, lettuce, cabbage, sweet corn. I mean, you name it, we planted it. Radishes even, onions. So we're not gonna go quite that big, but at her papa's house in um, about, he lives about 15 minutes away from us. Um, he has this really nice deck that's up in the air. It's like a split level house. And on the back of his deck, he's got a lot of big pots. And so we are gonna make a little deck top garden. So what we are gonna be planting today is some beans. Uh, these are pole bean variety. So we don't have to have bush beans because those won't work in a pot. But we can plant um, pole beans in this pot with a tripod and the beans will grow up the little dowel rod we'll use as our tripod and we'll have fresh green beans. The other thing we're gonna plant is broccoli because Lexi loved broccoli. So we're gonna do that. And then we also have um, some carrot seeds, but those are gonna get planted directly into the pot because those grow down, the roots of those grow down. So you don't need to start those from seeds. You need to plant those where you're going to have them because you cover them up with a board and keep the soil nice and moist. And then after about two weeks, you'll start seeing little sprouts come up. So basically we are going to plant our seeds in these little um, seed starting pots. I bought these from Walmart. The brand is Back to the Roots. And um, I got these because they are USDA certified bio-based product. So basically they're organic and they're peat, peat, if you've ever heard of like peat pots, P-E-A-T, peat. They're peat free. Um, and why that's important is because peat lands cover only 3% of the earth's land. They store 30% of the world's soil carbon, which is twice as much as the world's forest. And mine peat lands contribute to over 1 billion metric tons of CO2 emissions per year, which is about the same as all the cars in America each year. So, holy moly, that's a lot of CO2 emissions. So better to buy organic also because you want your food you're eating to be free of chemicals. And if you've ever bought plants from the store, I'm not knocking anyone who does that. Not everyone um, grew up the way I did. My mom has a greenhouse. She starts things from seeds. It's been her lifelong dream. Get your hands on whatever you can get your hands on. But a lot of the companies that sell to the big box retailers and the home improvement stores, when you go to their garden center, they have a chemical sprayed on them that keeps them from getting too big. Because if you think about it, they're in that little plastic pot or tray. And if they grow too big too fast, then there's not a very long shelf life for someone to buy them because you need it to not get too big and outgrow the little plastic pot that it's in because if it does then it'll just die. So it's more profitable for them to spray chemicals on all of the plants that keep them from getting so big. So now that we know better we can do better. So we're gonna try this out. So let me get all this set up and then we'll come back and show you what we got going on. We are all set up here and ready to go. So these are what these little pots look like. And the idea is that you follow the instructions on the back of whichever ones you get. There's all different kinds of the store. They even have those little trays of, they're called Jiffy Pots, that's the brand. And they look like a little disc with a hole in the center. And <clears throat> with like a little crater. And when um, you water it, it puffs up 
like it expands and that's where you put your seeds in that little hole it's for starting your seeds so follow the instructions on the back this one has very clear and easy to read instructions and basically it says water thoroughly and there's no drainage holes needed this isn't like a plastic pot where it has drainage holes on the bottom this is very breathable so the water will seep out and soak in so it says that we should start with these very wet most of these type of pots tell you to start with the pot and the soil very damp because that's what you need for your seed to germinate and you want to check your pots every day um, ours will be under a grow light because you don't want that top layer of soil getting crusty because then when it sprouts up from the seed it'll have a hard time poking through the soil if it's really crusty so you want to make sure that it's nice and moist on top you don't have to overwater, but you can use a spray bottle to mist and make sure you get everything thoroughly damp so do you want to spray all the pots for us all right, so Lexi's gonna be my helper today. She's never planted anything before, so I'm excited to go back to my roots, no pun intended, and show her the kinds of things we did growing up with our big garden. We planted flower beds all over, my mom had roses, so we love doing all the things. Okay, squeeze it. Yep, and make sure you get it wet on the sides of the wall. We got the inside really wet. Now you're gonna spray the bottom. Okay. Right there. Okay. And then a little bit on the outside. We got all the pots sprayed. As you can see, we did the second row last. And you can tell already that it's already soaking in and some spots are becoming dry. So that's what's going to happen, but that just goes to show you that if you put on a bunch of water, it's not going to degrade these pots. They're made to absorb that water because the goal in the end is if the roots come out of there, you can just plant this whole kit and caboodle. Now, if you don't have the kind where the roots are going to grow out of it, then you might have to peel away the pot a little bit. But if you play your cards right, the roots grow out of this and you plant the whole pot and this just degrades into your soil. So, oh, first things first, I'm going to let you have this spoon, Lexi, and we are literally going to fill these pots with soil. Okay. Now, I made sure to get organic. This is natural and organic seed starting mix, and that's kind of what you want, okay? You don't want to use regular potting soil. You need to use something that is meant for starting seeds specifically because it's a specific mix that will help your seeds grow. I think my mom said she prefers the organic miracle grow moisture um, control that really locks in the moisture. So there's lots of different options out there, but my main goal was looking for one that was organic and specifically for starting seeds. So that's the plan. Now, I'm not going to cut this off all the way. I'm only going to cut off a little corner of it because we only need so much soil in each little pot. All right, Lex. So what you're going to do is you're going to, do you want me to grab the soil for you and then you spoon it into the pot? So the idea is this is not like brown sugar. Okay, I'll show you what to do, Lexi, and then you can do it. You're going to dump this in there. And you're gonna fill it like maybe a half an inch from the top or so and then plant your seed and then put the rest in. But you don't wanna pack this in like brown sugar. Like our carrots, for example, when we plant those, you want that soil to be loose and aerated because carrots are a root vegetable. They grow down into the ground. And if they can't force down, the soil's too packed, then you're not gonna have any carrots. Same with your seeds. Your seeds, if you pack the soil in too tight, they can't force their way up to sprout. So, oh. 
Well, we have soil in all of the pots now, and that's about how much soil is in the pots. If you can tell, that's how far down my finger goes. So now it is time to plant the seeds. Yay. Now, if you're advanced like my mom, you can do a couple of seeds per pot. And then as they start sprouting up an inch or two, you can actually decide which of the two looks better and just yank the one that doesn't look so good and then there you go. But if you're like us and you just want to keep it simple, you just do one seed per pot. Am I going to need all of these? No. no. We're only going to plant three bush or three pole bean plants, one near each dowel rod. But I'm planting four pots because I want to make sure that everything grows because every once in a while you get a bad seed or something that doesn't sprout up or just doesn't look very good and it looks kind of scrawny and scraggly. So you always make yourself extra so you can choose, no pun intended, the cream of the crop, the ones that look the best and those are the ones that actually get planted. So these are the green beans we have chosen. These are non-GMO organic beans and they are blue lake and they are stringless, which means that that little line down the center, like when you snap the beans, there's a little sometimes green bean string right there that you can remove. I snapped beans for years at my house. That was one of my jobs when we made green beans at home and I don't ever remember that string. And I called my mom and I said, stringless green beans, what are they talking about? She's like, you don't remember the string? And I was like, no, I don't. So seed planting is easy. There is instructions right on the back of your seed packet because every variety of seed is different. So you have to follow the instructions for your variety of seed. You can't just go search Google and say, I want to plant blue leg stringless string beans and just use what it says. You have to go by what the manufacturer says. For our purposes, we need to know about this box right there, the care and maintenance, which says that we should be planting them one to one and a half inches in. So we're about a half an inch from the top of our pot with soil. So we need to go down about one to one and a half inches. And that's where we're going to put our seed and then cover it back up with a little bit of soil on top. And days to germination is six to eight. So that is the days until you see an actual little green sprout coming up. It's very important. If you're gonna use a grow light, you do not need to put your plants under a light until after you have seen things sprout. You don't need it because what that's gonna do is just end up drying out your soil and the top layer of your soil is just gonna keep getting crusty and you're gonna have to continue to spritz it with more water and it's just not good. So once you see something sprouted, you're going to need that grow light because you need the heat and the warmth and the light mimics the sun. So until then, just leave them. Once you have your grow light turned on, you want it on for about eight hours during the day, just like they would get sun during the day. And then you want to turn that light off and overnight, they can just sit in the dark, just like a regular plant would outside. So a grow light basically acts just like the sun. The sun rises and the sun sets. So your plants are not getting 24 hours of sun. All right. So. Ooh, they're pretty big. These are what the bean seeds look like. See if I can show you one. Ooh, they're tiny. <laughs> Maybe I can. They're slippery little fellas. That is what a bean seed looks like. Almost the size of like if you took a pill maybe, a small pill. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four beans here on the left. And then we're gonna do the other four on the right as broccoli. And then I have these tongue depressors so we can label which row is which. And then when we get them in the pots, we can label them as well. So that way we'll remember what's what. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, Lexi, is I'm going to take 
the end of the spoon. I could use my finger, but I don't want to smash it down too much and I can kind of use this to swirl. So we're going to like swirl down in there and see how you just use your spoon to create a little hole in the soil, which is what you would be doing if you were planting them in the ground. So then you're going to drop your little seed into that hole. Very good. And then you're just going to cover it back up with soil. And then once we have all the seeds dropped down in there, then we'll go back through and add a little bit more soil on top. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have all the seeds in our first four pots, one, two, three, four, we are going to go through and take the spray bottle, and I'll show you how, Lexi. And we are going to dampen this soil. We want the soil to be thoroughly dampened, okay? So you're going to take it. And you're going to spray it just like that. And then once you see the water pooling on the top, you want to let it soak in for a little bit. And then eventually you'll see the sides start to get moist again. And that's how you know you put enough water in there once the water starts kind of seeping out. So we've got water pooling on the top. So we're going to leave that right there. Mm -hmm. Because even though there's water pulling on the top, remember we still got another layer of soil to put on there, so it's not going to matter. All right. So now we're going to take and just sprinkle a little bit more soil on top. So you want an inch and a half, and you want to account for this layer of soil you're gonna add on the top. So I went down about an inch, right? Because we left about a half an inch for soil on the top. So we've got our other things off to the side. The beans are right here. So now we are going to focus on the broccoli. And this is the broccoli we're using again, non-GMO organic, if you can find it once again. We are going to follow the directions. Now, the other one said to plant down one and a half inches. However, this one says you only have to plant down about half an inch. So remember, I already left about half an inch to plant soil on top. So really, we don't have to do much except kind of just make a little hole, crater where she can stick it. I'm not like digging down in the soil because we don't have to go down an inch. And then we will put the soil on top. So let me open these and see if I can show you what they look like. Yeah, All know. seeds look different. I want to see what they look like too. I know, like she's excited. She's never gotten to do a ton of planting before. When she was on treatment, um, you know, playing around in the dirt and stuff is not the best when you have a low immune system. So we did not do a lot of that. Okay, so it says that we can sow two to three seeds together outdoors every two feet and thin to one plant when they're an inch tall. So we're going to, these are teeny tiny. So in this case, I think because they're so tiny, we're probably going to have to go ahead and do two per pot and then thin out whichever one looks the best because... I mean, this literally looks like a little grain of pepper. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's literally a tiny, it looks like a teeny tiny little bead. And so I'm afraid that if we do not plant two, if one of these doesn't go, I know we're trying to do four across here, but ah, it makes me nervous. So since these are so tiny, we're going to plant two in each little pot. Okay. All right. So here we go. So you're going to put two in each little crater. So one, two, we'll kind of separate them out in the crater so they're not like touching each other. So put one on one end of the crater and one on the other end. It's hard to do that, I know. There we go. Okay. One, two. Okay. Like tiny little pieces of it. Like little pieces. All right. 
So we've got that. So I'm going to attempt to carefully pour these back in the thing. They're so tiny. They are so tiny. All right, so now I'm just going to take my finger and just move the soil back around and just cover up our little crater so that the seeds are just barely covered up because remember, we're gonna add the rest of that soil back in. And here's a little clump that I'm gonna spread out. There we go. All right, so we've covered them back up. Now we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit more soil back on top. All right, I think we're good. So now I'm going to make my little stick and plant that says broccoli and mushroom. Do you know how to spell broccoli? Uh, I did this. No cheating. What letter does it start with? B R A C K. Brock Ali. Mm, you're close. Broccoli is actually spelled B R O C C O L I. But that was good sounding out. She said B R A C K, like Brock. The English language can be hard sometimes. So we're going to put this here. And let me go get our Tupperware container so we can get everything set up. All right, so we are just going to put these now in the Tupperware container. So the idea is you just place them all in a row and you have your one that says what it is. So this last one here says broccoli. So the beans are gonna go right here and then they need a little shorter than broccoli. So we're going to leave them in this for now. However, if you look at the back of these packages, the days to germination, which means when that little sprout's going to pop up, is different. For the beans, it's only six to eight days. But for the broccoli, it's actually 10 to 14. So the broccoli is probably going to take a little longer. So once we start seeing sprouts on all the beans, if we don't on the broccoli, we need to remove the broccoli and put them in a different tub temporarily so that we just have the beans getting that light. Because remember, you only want things that have sprouted to be under your grow light. So this is going to be a series. We are going to continue showing you our journey with the garden every so often. So we are so excited to take you along on this little experiment of pot gardening that I've never done before because we always had a big garden in the actual ground. Um, this would be a great option if you live in an area that gets sun or you have a windowsill. Even if you live in the city, you can still do this. You don't have to live in the country like us. We live in the city. We're making it work. So you just got to do what you can with what you have access to and try to buy chemical free as much as possible. We don't plan to use any pesticides or nasty chemicals. We just want good, clean, healthy food, don't we? Yes. So the next part of this series will be in probably another week or two, once we finally have some little plants sprouted, we'll video a little bit each day and do progress updates along the way. And then we'll do a big video when we go to transplant everything into our pots. That's what you call it. So I think we're going to be in for a fun summer. And I'm excited to teach Lexi about gardening because that's how I grew up in the country. So what do you want to tell everyone, Lexi? Subscribe and click the bell to be notified.